I have these vinyls and I've listened to them, but I don't have a record player myself. I was supposed to get a record player, but then um, I had to use that money to repair the back bumper of my car because I backed into the wall of a garage. Hey YouTube, this is Pete with the Crystal Casino Band. Welcome back for another Thursday video. And this week we're gonna be showing you guys our favorite records as a band. We're gonna be walking you through the vinyls that we own and uh, what they mean to us. And this is basically based off of uh, Amoeba Records series that they have called What's In My Bag. And if it was not in a pandemic time, we would be uh, going through their store, we'd be searching through vinyls and buying them and then showing you guys what we got afterwards. But instead, we just decided to show you guys our top three favorite records that we have in our collection. So you'll be hearing my favorite three, Jordan's favorite three, and Jared and Joey's. So before we get started, uh, first off, I just want to say if you guys can please like and subscribe to our channel, we would really appreciate that. Oh, I also just want to say, I bet Joey is uh, drinking milk right now. Quick little sip of... WM, that's where I call whole milk. There's been a lot of debate about whether he should be drinking cow milk or oat milk, and I'm just gotta say, I'm Team Joey. Stick with the cow milk, man. Don't listen to the haters. He's probably trying to get his own Got Milk sponsorship. I remember that there was one in my elementary school that had the All American Rejects on it, and uh, that's what got me into music. So, Joey, hats off to you. Alright, so without further ado, first record that I'm gonna show. There's really no surprise here. It's Is This It by The Strokes. Uh, everybody always says that that's like who we sound the most like when it comes to our music and they're not wrong. They definitely like influence all the guitar lines in our parts. Uh, and like, cause Albert Hammond Jr. and Nick Valenci just have some crazy guitar parts that uh, I always try to write into our, our music as well. Just like the way that they, um, they hold like the top three strings on the guitar for just to make those sounds is so nice. Like we've been covering these songs for a very long time. Like we covered Last Night a lot and we cover uh, Someday. Someday was actually one of the first songs that Joey and I ever learned how to play together. So this record means a lot to me because of that. The next one that I got is another New York band, but they're also kind of from Washington DC, I think. The Walkman is called Bows and Arrows. And they're, I would say they are very criminally underrated. They're like one of my favorite bands of all time for sure. And this record just means a lot to me because like all the songs are, the lyrics are really strong. There's one of the songs on here is like gotta be one of my favorites of all time. It's called The Rat. Joey and I have tried covering this so many different times and have always like failed because it's just so hard to match the intensity of what it sounds like on the record. It's got like one of the craziest drum parts of all time. And uh, yeah, so I recommend if you're into like m indie music and trying to figure out something new to listen to, like you gotta listen to this one. And then last but not least, I would say one of my favorite records of all time is Abbey Road. I have a little tapestry of Abbey Road in my room. There's my ring light, my TikTok influencer light. It's the same street just without the Beatles. Abbey Road is like one of the best Beatles albums of all time. There's uh, so many good songs off of it. It starts off with Come Together, which already is like so strong, and then it goes all the way to the medley at the very end, which is just Chef's Kiss. It's a masterpiece right there. And then it has like some of the best songs written from George Harrison too, which really makes it, uh, it really adds to the album, because George Harrison didn't write that many songs for the Beatles, but his strongest ones, he was like, I'm putting it here for our last album. Yeah, so I would say those three albums have got to be my favorite of all time. They've definitely all have influenced like our songwriting process for sure. And I'm excited for you guys to now see what the other guys like and how that um, adds to our songwriting as well. Hey guys, this is Joey from the Crystal Royale band and here today we're going to be playing uh i'm here to play what's in my bag from amoeba records brought to you um live from my apartment mm. just so good for you and um yeah let's just get right into it by the way i think we're going to do a video on this at some point i, I have one of the most advanced um coding systems to to organize my collection of records um one of the most advanced systems you'll ever see in the whole world um and 
Um, yeah, I think I'm going to do a walkthrough on how to do that at some point, um, if, if y'all are interested in seeing that. I knew um, I had to pick a jazz record because, quite frankly, I don't think anybody else in the band will. Um, and I sort of have this, like, urge, like, really um, compulsion to be, like, contrarian and just to sort of be different. So I picked my favorite jazz record that I own. Um, this is Miles This is Miles Davis Milestones. Almost got a little tripped up on the title. Um, but this is an incredible record. Um, Miles Davis is, I could have picked like Bitches Brew or something, um, but I love the, the lineup of other jazz legends on this record. Obviously Miles Davis, John Coltrane is on this, um, Cannibal Adderley is on here, Paul Chambers and Philly Jones play on this. And I, th those guys that I just listed are on every song. Um, I, Dizzy Gillespie is on a, on a track on here and Thelonious Monk is also um, on this record. So yeah, just absolutely chock full of, of sort of jazz legends um, and you know, Miles Davis is looking quite awesome on the cover there. And there's a pretty cool picture of, of, um, of him and, and Coltrane on the back here. So um, definitely would recommend giving this a listen. Um, I probably prefer the, the B side, but um, the whole thing is just really, really awesome. Miles Davis with Milestone. Okay, next I had to had to put Dave in here. Um, this is Crash by Dave Matthews Band. Um, I have a couple of Dave Matthews records. I went with this one just because I think I just love every song on here, um, especially number forty one, Say Goodbye, Lie in Your Graves. I mean, I'm just reading the track list right now. They're all incredible. Um, obviously, Leroy Moore is on here um, rest in peace to, to the to the guru rocks king um yeah excellent record from dave matthews band hit after hit after hit the hits never stop very fun to listen to also there's some records that i love that aren't necessarily fun um but i find this record a ton of fun especially the deep there's two discs but the the second side of the second disc um with tripping billies it has just like an absolutely legendary jam on it um Definitely Crash by Dave Matthews Band. It's one you're gonna wanna pick up. This next record, it's actually the newest record in my collection. Um, my, my dear friends, Will and Sarah, um, gave this to me for my birthday. Um, and so, you know, just one of these. Um, this is Fear Fun by Father John Misty. Um, it's a record I've always loved and Will claims that I introduced him to Father John Misty. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't really remember um, that, but it's, it's kind of cool to be sort of like a influencer. Um, so I don't know. I, if you wanted to, if I, if we could make me one, that might be good. Um, so Fear Fun. Um, yeah, I think Nancy from now on is like one of my favorite songs ever. Um, that's on here. Um, I'm writing a novel. It's just like really, really good song. And then the B side of this person, like I, I, I listen to the B side of this just like straight through when I'm walking around town, and they're, they're not necessarily Father John's like biggest hits, um, but it just like plays like a really incredible like well-rounded rock record, um, the whole thing, but especially the B side. Um, yeah, only son of a ladies man, Sally Hatchet. You can do it without me. Is just like so like perfect blues rock. Um, I'm learning to love the war. A little political. TP's one through twelve isn't necessarily my favorite, but then every man needs a companion. Um, just really really incredible stuff. And I love the, the album art. Um, yeah, you can you can Google this album art if you want to look closer. But there's some really really funny stuff on here. So um, check out Father John Misty. Thank you to Will and Sarah. What's up guys, it's Jared from the band. I'll go through my top three vinyls that I have right now. First up is The Best of Kansas. Just kind of grew up in Kansas a lot, just learning like, I mean, carrying my wayward son, classic. Um, Point of No Return, Dust in the Wind. It's like, as long as you can't go, can't go wrong with. But this is just great 70s rock album. Another great one is Hotel California. Just 
I mean, amazing. Just, I mean, all the hits. Don Felder is amazing. Don Henley is amazing. Glenn Fry. Joe Walsh. Respect. And for my final one, it is kind of a different kind of album, I guess you'd say. It's, it's, it has like pictures on it. Couldn't Stand the Weather by Steve Ray Vaughan and Double Trouble. It's got a nice silhouette of Steve Ray Vaughan there. I picture from there. They're just kind of growing up playing blues and singing blues. It's just like. Steve was like kind of a massive influence for me and in how I like was playing and how I like play today. And I just think this is a really cool just album. I think this is the most expensive one I ever bought. Compared to the other ones that I bought, they were like second hand, like this was like really expensive, especially because I was only working like a job for like less than ten dollars an hour. So I was like spending my money for this one. And it's cool to just have and have like pictures on it. Except that this is the first time I ever saw an album like this. And I was like, wow, like, I need to get this one. Those are my choices. Those are my uh, three, um, albums, final, final albums. Alright guys, Jordan here from the Crystal Casino Band. I'm gonna show you what's in my bag, what's in my record collection. It's really unfortunate, I don't have my records here in DC right now. Um, I have a fairly big collection that I'd really love to show you. But, um, we're gonna work with some drawings that I made and hopefully Morgan can provide some visual accompaniment to see how I did as well. So when I listen to records, I want something that's like vintage sounding. I want to hear like the crackle when you set it down. I am also a fan of, you know, records that have been worn, you know, give it that aesthetic that's the reason why I got a record player um, and why I started collecting records. So immediately I'll have a bias towards older records. This may be the part where you start um, losing viewers. First record, it's Carol King, Tapestry. Um, there you go. Sorry about the drawing too. This one has a lot of unique interior design aspects that I don't think I necessarily made. Carol King's Tapestry is one of the best albums. Um, in my opinion, it gives you that like vintage Sunday vibe, Sunday cup of coffee vibe. I feel the earth move. It's a good full band. Uh, so far away, it's too late, another full band one, and then, you know, down and down. Uh, classic songs, a little more popular by covers, um, like You Make Me Feel Like a Natural Woman, covered by Aretha Franklin, written by Kiara King. Um, she has a beautiful version as well. Where You Lead, the, the, the Gilmore Girls song, is another classic as well. Um, Carol really gives you vintage vibes in this, 1970, and, um, Definitely one of my favorite records to put on a Sunday morning. Moving forward, let's go to 1971. Um, a little bit different. Um, still a New York based album. This is At Fillmore East by the Allman Brothers Band, double LP. And usually I'm not a fan unless every note is perfect on a record um, for it to be two, two albums, but uh, this one definitely gets a pass. At Fillmore East is an incredible album. Still Dane, uh, Dwayne Allman playing guitar on it. Um, it's definitely an album that I use to work on my chops, you know, even if it's like playing over an acoustic guitar whenever I hear this album. Definitely massive inspiration for me, the Allman Brothers, um, and how I play. Riding up scales and then just hitting that low note, uh, the octave, the root, um, you know, when, when you really want to build tension in this song. So I up with Statesboro Blues. Uh, my favorite on this is probably Done Somebody Wrong. It has incredible guitar harmonies, uh, Dickie Betts and Dwayne Allman. Um, you know, really, really like orchestral things are doing with guitars in this. And then of course, in memory of Elizabeth Reed, um, a D Dickie Betts guitar anthem, uh, beautiful song. And Web and Post is on it as well, uh, Mountain Jam. So it shouldn't surprise anyone. Uh, I'm definitely a jam band fan and I think this is an, a live album that, that you want to have in your collection um, to just completely appreciate every note that's being played. Um, and, and the last album I'm gonna share with you today is an album which I first discovered searching for records. Um, really the joy of, of buying records is discovering you know, something and just having no idea what it's gonna be and putting it on. This is an album that when I first saw it and when I came across at the record store, I thought it was artificially generated for me. This is an album called Nielsen Sings Newman. Nielsen being Harry Nielsen, singing Newman being Randy Newman. Randy Newman made many D Disney Pixar uh, songs like You've Got a Friend of Me, Toy Story, and also Monsters, Inc. Um, but he has a really 
expansive um, solo career on his own um, with raunchier lyrics than you might expect and also more uh, politically attuned uh, a lot of political commentary uh, and social commentary on his on his work. Harry Nielsen was a big fan of Ray Newman who were both young at the time uh, and Harry Nielsen decided to do a full-on cover album of Randy Newman songs with the help of Newman playing piano. Harry Nielsen on this is just a vocal powerhouse. There's like, I think I read that that Harry Nielsen, they almost laid over 180 vocal tracks on just one song. Um, that was the highest. So this album is like coming from a, you at all places. Harry Nielsen's voice um, soaring. It goes high, it goes low. It's really weird. He just like talks to you at times. It's a really strange album, uh, especially, you know, him covering Randy Newman songs as well, who often take on like these individual personas um, tied to historical historical events as well. Truly, uh, definitely one of my favorite albums to listen to. Um, highly recommend it and, um, and all of it. So that's it for me. Again, you know, I'm definitely someone who prefers older records um, from the 70s, 60s and 70s. If I see anyone here sharing uh, their Target limited edition or Urban Outfitters edition of, of AM by Arctic Monkeys, you know, not gonna be good. And I, I, may, I may scream on the next vlog. So um, that's it for me. I appreciate your time. Uh, like, subscribe and everything else I'm supposed to say. Last record I'm gonna talk about um, it's sort of a weird one, sort of one of those that you're going to categorize in sort of the weird column. Um, this is this is uh, Tim Heidecker's Fear of Death. So we had Fear of Fun, now Fear of Death. And of course Tim Heidecker, famous for his comedy um, with Tim and Eric. This is not a funny record. Um, this is a completely serious sort of rock, rock record. And um, basically... I love this record. Um, I it just came out in 2020. Um, it's it's like kind of political in, in some ways. Not not in like a you know don't don't vote for him, vote for this kind of guy. Sort of it's not political like that. It's more just like um, there's a lot of good commentary on just like society. Um, you know, there's a there's a song on here called Property that just sort of picks apart the idea of like owning stuff in a really like interesting way um, and the, the music and the lyrics are all just like really really good um, wise blood has a few songs on here um, I don't see it written on here but there is he definitely recorded some of this with the lemon twigs um, which is pretty cool and there's a really good cover of let it be by the Beatles on here um, so this is yeah Tim Heidecker's fear of death I also have it on cassette not sure why exactly um, and I just wanted to share this it's a picture of Tim in a swimming pool you can see he signed it for me um, so thank you Tim um, check out Tim's record fear of death I think it's um, virtually a lock to win Oscar uh, or um, Grammys it's a virtually a lock for Grammys and I think for best music and it will if you vote if you can vote at Grammys Make sure you be sure to vote for Tim Heidegger's Fear of Death. So that has been my What's in My Bag. Um, thank you so much for, for watching. And um, yeah, cheers everybody. Give yourself a little bit of whole milk.